Hello. Today's poem we're considering is One Flesh by Elizabeth Jennings. Before we start, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. I have the poem here, so let's start. Lying apart now, each in a separate bed, he with a book keeping the light on late, she like a girl dreaming of childhood. All men elsewhere, it is as if they wait some new event, the book he holds unread, her eyes fixed on the shadows overhead. Tossed up like flotsam from a former passion, how cool they lie. They hardly ever touch, or if they do, it is like a confession of having little feeling or too much. Chastity faces them, a destination for which their whole lives were a preparation. Strangely apart, yet strangely close together, silence between them like a thread to hold and not wind in, and time itself's a feather touching them gently. Do they know they're old? These two who are my father and my mother, whose fire from which I came has now grown cold. So let's start by examining the poem stanza by stanza. In this poem, a daughter observes her parents in bed and reflects on how love changes from the early passions of physical love to something routine. It makes her reflect on love, marriage, and her own future relationships and happiness. In stanza one, the narrator presents us with a couple who have grown distant. They sleep in separate beds and in their own way escape each other. He through reading, she by dreaming of childhood. Perhaps the poet is saying, this is not our idea of romantic love that we are taught or believe when we are young. The couple seem no longer to communicate. His book, unread, masks he has nothing to say, while she focuses not on him, but on the ceiling. Through hyperbole, exaggeration, the speaker states this is the fate that all couples meet, all men elsewhere. The speaker believes both hope for a new event, a change from their dull existence, but the use of foreshadowing, the shadows overhead, suggest the only likely new event will be the death of one of them. The second stanza continues to stress their separateness and waning closeness. The speaker uses unflattering comparisons, comparing them to flotsam from a former passion, suggesting a wreck of a relationship and how cool they lie, comparing them to corpses as their love is dead. Ironically, she says chastity is their destination. The lack of physical love, which we associate with single young people, not married couples. Chastity is also associated with spiritual people, including priests and nuns. Her use of confession supports this religious element. We are told they hardly ever touch, which suggests there may be some physical intimacy, but the act is no longer pleasant. A confession that is not shared with the other, that there is little feeling, arousal, or too much feeling, pain. 
As well as being a lyric poem, a poem that expresses personal feelings, this is also written as an elegy, a poem for the dead. The speaker mourns the death of passion in her parents. She notes that paradoxically, separateness is what brings them together, strangely apart, yet strangely close together. Repeating strangely stresses that to one so young like the speaker, it is something she cannot understand. The mutual silence is what joins them, a sharing of sorts. She compares time to a feather, touching them gently, which suggests the fragility of love and their remaining years as a couple. The feather reminds us of wings and the phrase time flies and the gentle touch of time suggests that change happens slowly, imperceptibly, and that physical passion dwindles rather than suddenly extinguishes. The third stanza reminds us of the second stanza and the comparisons the speaker made to corpses. The bed a place symbolically associated with passion and physical love, is now a place for the laying of corpses. A deathbed of sorts. The final line discloses that the couple are the speaker's parents. She contemplates whether they are aware that the passion that conceived her has grown cold. The rhetorical question at the poem's end reflects the speaker's puzzlement at how her parents can stay together in a world she perceives lacks passion. It is a question she cannot answer and the poem ends without resolution. As she considers how physical love loses its intensity, she contemplates how this would also happen to her in any future relationship. Interestingly, Elizabeth Jennings never married. Like most great poems, it is open to many interpretations. One being that the poet has provided an answer to the question the speaker asks. We assume that the child in this poem still lives with her parents, especially if she is watching them in their bedroom. Despite her perceptions of separateness, their love for each other remains and there is a shared familiarity and comfort in their recalibrated relationship. Do they know they're old? is humorous because seen through the eyes of a younger person, perhaps a teenager, their parents may seem old. And indeed, the fire from which she came has not grown cold. It is merely transferred to her. A parent's love is never diminished or extinguished. In this sense, One Flesh is a love poem of parental love for their child. This is something the narrator has no life experience of and until it happens to her will remain a mystery. She has yet to learn that love is not just a physical act but one that includes commitment and working together to raise the child they love. The title, One Flesh, gives us a clue to its theme. She is of the same flesh as her parents and the product of their love and passion. 
love has not died and she is the living proof of this. And the three stanza structure reflect the three in the relationship, husband, wife and child, father, mother and daughter. Elizabeth Jennings, 1926 to 2001, was throughout the 1960s one of the most popular poets in England. She published a great number of works. Her poems often explore love, relationships and religion. A natural poet, she once said, I write fast and revise very little. I hope you found this video useful. If so, please hit the like button and ring the bell. Please remember to subscribe and check out our other videos on writing and poem analysis. Until next time, from Carol and me, write well.